If you would, go with me to the book of Acts. You all, I, it seems like I'm trying to lose my voice. I kind of wanted to holler today, but if you just be patient with me, I'm praying that God restores my voice like he did for Zechariah. Restores my voice. Amen. For now, I'm just going to use it how he has given it to me. Acts 14, and we want to read 21 through 28. Acts chapter 14, <clears throat> 21 through 28. There you will find words in this particular order. And when they had preached the gospel to the city, and they had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and Iconium and Antioch, confirming, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. Why don't you nudge someone and say, continue in the faith? And that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in the church, we did that this year. Uh, well, we ordained deacons. It says, and they ordained them elders, those are preachers, in the church. And they prayed with fasting. They commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. And after they had passed through Poseidon, they came to Pamphylia. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Atalia. And thence sailed to Antioch, from whence they had recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, perhaps it was on a last Sunday, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how God had opened up the door of faith unto the Gentiles and they abode there a long time with the disciples. Amen. And just for the time we share together, I want to use for a sermonic framework, amen, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. Brothers and sisters, I'm pretty sure that most of us have heard this particular phrase, there's no place like home. As a matter of fact, this particular phrase was coined in, uh, in uh, a novel that became a movie which was entitled The Wizard of Oz. It was an American favorite um, main stroke movie. It was a musical as well, which I'm sure most of us recognize. For over the years, this film has become one of the best known of all films, as well as a part of American popular culture, because when one looks at the story and at this story, with discerning eyes, one would find that this fairy tale is saturated and brimming over with a Christian counsel and godly guidance. The main character, whose name was Dorothy, and her beloved furry friend, who we know as Toto, found themselves caught up, compassed about, and blown away by a mystical tornado which gusted them away to arrive in a land called Oz. And I'm pretty sure most of us are familiar with The Wizard of Oz. Perhaps your favorite rendition, like I, is The Wiz, which featured Diana Ross and Michael Jackson. Be that as it may, Dorothy and Toto were in a whirlwind, released from the whirlwind, and as she finally descended out of the clouds, 
she emerges from the wreckage, Dorothy immediately observes unrecogni unrecognizable, bizarre, and berserk surroundings. She then, without delay, makes well, a well-known remark to Toto and says, I've got a feeling that we're no longer in Kansas anymore. From this point, Dorothy and Toto embark upon an epic journey whereby they run into some funny-looking friends. The Scarecrow, you all remember them, don't you? The Tin Man, the Lion, and each of them are dis dispirited people. Each of them are broken in some way as they struggle with what seems to be insurmountable personal issues, gross inadequacies, and personal insufficiencies. And as they are on their journey back down the yellow brick road, they come across some comical comrades, they encounter some obnoxious situations, they experience victory over some vile villains. They conquered, brothers and sisters, some seemingly overwhelming fears and overcame some frightening phobias. And I venture to say that perhaps things happen in Oz that Dorothy will never forget. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, sometimes God sends us into a place of ours, and sometimes it seems like we find ourselves uh, facing insurmountable mountains. Sometimes we feel like our adequacies are overwhelming, but brothers and sisters, if you just keep on down God's highway, God will help you to overcome those fears and those frights and those phobias. Now, there are several purposeful points that emerge from this text, and I'll breeze across them, and I'll bid you adieu. I'd like to share these. The first purpose of homecoming or coming to church uh, is what they did in this text is they would reflect on where they had been. And I challenge you today, brothers and sisters, as this 2019 year comes to a close, you ought to take time to reflect on where you have been. You should always remember where you have been. Verse 22 says that they went exhorting them to continue in the faith. Not only did they reflect on where they'd been, they had began to encourage one another to continue in the faith. And that we must, uh, we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. This suggests that Paul and Barnabas got home and they told believers at Antioch of all the things that happened to them in the course of their ministry. I can imagine them as they assemble together reminiscing about the good things and the bad things and the ugly things that they had encountered in ministry. I, 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 brothers and sisters, I can hear them talking about how Paul preached such a good word uh, until the Gentiles and the Greeks and the Jews had all became believers. They talked about how miracles were performed and how they had been stoned and left for dead, how they had been dragged through the city streets, how the people had shouted when they were saved, sanctified, and delivered and set free. They talked about all of what God had done for them. Brothers and sisters, but through it all, God kept them. Might I suggest to you today that when you remember where you have been, it helps you to appreciate where you are right now. When you remember where you've been, it helps you to appreciate where you are now. I might not live in a four-story home, but someone's testimony today is that 
they're no longer sleeping in their car. When you remember where you have come from, brothers and sisters, it helps you get a better perspective on life. When you remember where you have been, also, brothers and sisters, you can better determine the direction that you are going. 